Today in front of me, I have the Tamron 17-70 f2.8 lens for Sony's crop sensor mirrorless cameras. I don't think I've reviewed any crop sensor E-mount lenses on this channel, but in the past six months or so, I've been using the a6600 to record most of my videos on this channel, and that's what I'm using right now as well. And so when Tamron released this lens, I was naturally intrigued because the only alternative right now is the Sony 16-50. Five of 2.8 and that costs as much as the camera at like 13 or 1400 dollars with the Tamron you get the longer range and vibration control which is not on the Sony and it is about five or six hundred dollars cheaper than the Sony so why would any reasonable human being ever go for the Sony or does the Sony have some tricks up its sleeve and is this another case where you actually get what you pay for well that's what we're going to find out today because I also have the Sony lens right here. And before we begin, I'd like to thank BNH for sending me these lenses. And as always, neither BNH or Sony or Tamron asked me to make this review. I simply asked for the lenses and BNH kindly provided them. So hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a better idea of which one to buy. And if you do, please check out the BNH links in the description because if you make a purchase through the link, you're not only supporting a great business, I do get a small commission from the sale, which helps me continue to provide you great contents like these for free so everybody wins so with that out of the way let's get started first let's take a look at the hardware well there's really not much to it this looks like pretty much any other zoom lenses tamron's been making in the past few years there aren't any switches or buttons on the body and just like all the other tamron zoom lenses the placement of the focus ring and the zoom ring are reversed but i guess at least they're consistent with it i wouldn't call this a big lens by any means but if you like smaller lenses the Sony is about three quarters of an inch shorter. The Sony extends out a little bit more than the Tamron, but even then, the Tamron is a little bit taller. They both use a 67 millimeter filter thread and the weights are pretty similar as well. The Sony is 494 grams and the Tamron is just about 30 grams heavier at 525 grams. The Sony lens, unlike the Tamron, has a customizable focus hold button and the autofocus switch. These are things you can definitely live without but can make your life a little bit easier depending on how you shoot. They both come with a lens hood but nothing special they're more for minor protection than actually blocking out any lights which i'm fine with since i don't like any lens hoods that are too big the sony lens is made in china while the tamron is made in vietnam but the tamron's lens hood and the lens caps are made in china but they made sure to mention that it was designed in Japan. Neither of them feel particularly cheap or exceptionally over-engineered. The, the build quality, the durability, and the materials used feel pretty equal to me, and although I can't scientifically test it, the level of weather resistance also is probably very similar. So other than the fact that the Sony is slightly smaller and have some additional controls, everything feels pretty equal to me and I guess that's a point for Tamron since it costs $600 less. Next up, the focal length. So here's where things get a little bit more interesting. So the Tamron has the range of 17 to 70 millimeters, which on an APS-C body translates to 25.5 to 105 millimeters, and the Sony is 16 to 55, which becomes 24 to 82.5 millimeters. When you just look at the numbers 16 to 55 and 17 to 70, the 17 to 70 sounds like the clear winner because you get 14 more millimeters, but in the real world, it's actually not that simple. Focal length on the wider end makes a much bigger difference, so even the one millimeter difference can feel pretty significant, while something like 55 and 70 may not feel that different in reality. If you look at their spec sheets, the angle of view on the Sony lens is 83 to 29 degrees, and the Tamron's is roughly 79.5 to 23 degrees. So the overall difference is actually only about 2.5 degrees, which obviously sounds a lot smaller than 14 millimeters. Here's the Tamron at 17 millimeters and here's the Sony at 16. Even with the difference of one millimeter, you can see quite a bit more on the outer frame that you don't see on the Tamron's image. 
And here's the Tamron at 70 millimeters and the Sony at 55 millimeters. Obviously the Tamron has a tighter frame, but the extra 15 millimeters isn't going to be that dramatic in this range. So obviously not one is better than the other. If you prefer wider framing, get the Sony. If you want that extra reach, get the Tamron. But I just wanted to show you that the range you're getting aren't going to be that different. But one advantage of the Tamron is, although the framing may not be that different, the slightly longer focal length will give you better compression, so if you plan to shoot a lot of portraits, it'll produce more pleasing background blur. At close range, it actually looks pretty decent even with a 2.8 aperture on a crop sensor body. The Sony on the other hand, the background will look slightly busier in comparison. Another interesting difference is the minimum focusing distance. The Tamron can focus as close as 7.5 inches or 19 centimeters, while the Sony can only focus as close as a little over 12 inches or 33 centimeters. At 17 millimeters or 16 for the Sony, you can see the difference in magnification at their minimum focusing distances. However, despite the longer focusing distance, the Sony has the same minimum focusing distance at 16 and 55, while the Tamron has to move back a few inches at 70 millimeters, so the framing at the longer end become pretty similar. Now let's take a look at the optics. Here's the Tamron at 17 millimeters, and there's a tiny bit of barrel distortion here. At 24 millimeters, the distortion disappears, but starting around 35, you start to get some pin cushion distortion and it gets worse as you go longer. Here's 50 and 70. As you can see, nothing a tiny bit of correction won't fix, but since they're all so different at every focal length, they might require some manual adjustments. At every focal length, there's a little bit of vignetting at wide open, but it mostly goes away by 5.6. Side by side next to the Sony's image, again, you can see the difference in the focal length at the wide end and then at the tight end at 55 and 70 millimeters. Overall, the Tamron is plenty sharp all around, but the Sony definitely looks sharper. The Tamron is particularly soft at 70 millimeters, and even though the Sony is at 55 here, cropped to the same size, it's a lot sharper than the Tamron. So technically, if you want that extra reach, you could get sharper images with the Sony at 55 millimeters, than with the Tamron at 70 millimeters. Which is a bit disappointing for Tamron, but for the reasons I mentioned earlier, sharpness isn't everything, and it's not like the pictures are completely unusable. It's still pretty sharp, it's just not as sharp as the Sony. One good news is, there isn't a ton of dramatic improvement in sharpness when you stop it down, so you can get most of its sharpness at wide open. At 70 millimeters, it does get slightly better at 5.6, but still not as sharp as the Sony at 2.8. So again, not a terrible performance, performance by the Tamron by any means, but the Sony is the clear winner here. Next up, autofocus. This is another category Sony lenses always seem to be third parties, but most lenses are so good nowadays, it's not really an issue anymore. And the Tamron performs pretty well as predicted, and I haven't experienced any issues while using this lens for a few weeks. Also, both lenses are virtually silent while autofocusing. The Tamron does make a little sound, but unless you have your ear right next to it in a quieter room, you're not gonna hear it. The Sony is just completely silent. I couldn't hear anything out of it at all. And one last thing to talk about is the stabilization, or as Tamron calls it, vibration control. The Tamron has it, and the Sony doesn't. So what does that mean for you? With the Tamron, with steady shot on my H6600 turned on, my hit rates were about 40% at 1 tenth of the second, and about 25% at 1 fifth of a second. But interestingly, with the Sony lens, the hit rates were basically the same as the Tamron, sometimes actually higher. So at least on the H6600, the vibration control on the Tamron didn't really help at all. For video, there wasn't a huge difference, but I think the Tamron did a little bit better. There were some weird jerkiness when I moved side to side, but overall, the Sony's footage was definitely more shaky. So long story short, if you have an A6000 series body that does not have sensor stabilization, then the Tamron might be the better lens for you. And if you have an A6600, 
then I couldn't find any meaningful difference. I don't think it should be a big deciding factor at all. So here's my conclusion. The Tamron is obviously a better value at five or $600 less. There's nothing seriously wrong with it. Yeah, the Sony is sharper, but probably not $600 sharper. So if you just want an easy answer for which one to buy, to most people, I'm gonna recommend the Tamron. Also for most video shooters, since the difference in sharpness will not matter as much in video, I think the Tamron might be the better lens for you. But if the price isn't an issue for you, or if you're a working professional, the Sony also has a lot to offer as well. It is sharper than the Tamron, especially at the long end, so you can always crop a little bit if you need more range. But at the wide end, you can't make your images wider with the Tamron. So if these things matter to you, or if you're already on the Sony lens, you can be assured it wasn't a total waste of money. So that's gonna be it for me today, and if you have any more questions about these lenses, just leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to them all. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.